Hey everybody, it's Maggie and welcome back to my channel. I'm sorry that I look like this greasy wreck. Today we're gonna be talking about how to ditch cable and save money. And this is something that I feel like young adults growing up with like all the different streaming advice that advices no growing up with all the streaming devices and everything that we had at our fingertips it sort of was a no-brainer when I went and moved out on my own and started my new job that I didn't really want to pay for cable I just figured it would be better to only pay for internet because I use my phone and Wi-Fi and everything all the time so why not just have that and get TV through it so I've outlined five ways to help you save money and not pay for basic cable plans through cable providers the first streaming service that I'm gonna talk about is Netflix and this is the most common place this is why I'm hitting it first because I feel like let's just get this out of the way if somehow you have stumbled across my channel and you haven't heard of Netflix yet then what tree stump do you live under so just to give you a recap Netflix is a TV and movie streaming service and they've actually come out with their own original TVs and movies now they're really big they're winning awards at the Golden Globes and stuff too just like you know the world-renowned movies that they actually stream on their service Netflix comes in three different types of plans so the first plan is basic the next step up is standard and then the highest of the high is the premium plan and of course there's going to be a price difference between the three so let's start with the basic plan what it offers and what it costs so that is $7.99 for the basic plan this as with all of the plans, you actually get the first month free when you sign up, which is nice. You can give it a shot. You can cancel it any time with any of the plans, too. With the basic plan, you can only watch on one screen at a time. And this is really annoying. So you might have heard of your friend who signed up for Netflix and shared their login information with their neighbor or their roommate. And that's fine and great and kind. But just know that if you go to watch and they happen to be watching at the same time, you're going to get this notification that my family knows all too well that says, sorry, check back again later. Another user is using the service right now. You can play this on your TV, your laptop, your tablet or iPad or whatever. You get unlimited movies and television shows with the basic plan, but just know that you can only watch on your TV or your phone or your laptop at any one time. So then moving on to the standard plan and how this differs from the basic plan is that you actually get HD streaming with the standard plan and now you can actually stream on two different devices at the same time. So now your roommate and you can watch Netflix at once or your neighbor, whoever you shared your login with, which is a huge plus. Like two is definitely better than one. So I would say at the bare minimum, get the standard plan because I think that two screens is just playing it safe. The rest of the features are the same. Again, you can watch on your laptop, your TV, your tablet, and you have unlimited access to all the movies and TV shows. But then you have Macho Man Premium Plan, and this is going to cost you $11.99 per month. And this is what my family has. This allows four people to watch at one time. So this is why I'm such a moocher and I don't actually pay for the service because it's cheaper to have us all on one family plan than it would be for all of us to individually pay the $10 or $11, $12 a month. This allows you to have HD, Ultra HD, four devices running at one time, and then you have all the features that every other service offers. So again, first month free, unlimited access to TVs and movies, and you can watch it on your TV, laptop, and tablet. I think that if you're gonna get one service that this needs to be it of the things that I name. But let's keep going, maybe something else appeals to you more. So the second one that I'm gonna talk about is Hulu. So Hulu, I think that this is, they're trying to be like cable, is all I'll say when I go through this. Um, you don't have fancy names for the Hulu plans like Netflix does, so we'll just start with the cheapest one. So that is the Hulu Streaming Library. So all you get when you pay $7.99 per month on Hulu is access to their streaming library. So this is not as extensive as Netflix, which is why I say maybe go with Netflix if you're only going to pick one. And they used to have a free option, but you had to watch commercials and you had limited access to different episodes in a TV season. But now it's like, sorry, you have to pay regardless. And now the differentiating factor is that you pay a low price for just the Hulu streaming library, and then you can tack on $4 and get no ads or commercials. So that would be paying 
Okay. So for $11.99 per month, you can get just access to the Hulu streaming library. I've actually had a Hulu subscription. I really love it. This is a way that I keep up with the new shows that are coming on TV. I don't have a DVR and so I can't record anything. So if I'm not home when one of my like new network television TV shows comes on, then this is really the only way that I can watch it, with the exception of a few things that I'll go over in a minute. $7.99 for basic, you'll have ads. Pay an extra four bucks and you can get rid of the ads. But then Hulu has this new service called Hulu Live TV. And this is where it starts to get a lot like cable. So you pay $39.99 a month and you have access to the Hulu streaming library, 50 plus live and on-demand channels, local live TV, regional sports networks, a network on-demand library. You'll get regular live TV ads and breaks because again, you're just streaming live television. And you get six people that can use this service for $40 a month. So maybe if you live in a house with roommates, then the six of you, if you have that many roommates, woof. But let's say that you do, you're in college, you're living the life, living with tons of people doesn't matter. You could split this fee and it could be pretty cheap for you all to have this live TV access. But the kicker is that only two screens can run simultaneously. So if you're splitting this six ways, then only two people can watch at a time and the odds of that happening are pretty slim. So if you tack on an extra $15 a month, we're now looking at $45 in total per month, you can tack on a DVR service to it. And the big whammy is add on another $15 for the whole enchilada. You can have the Hulu streaming library, you can get the 50 plus TV channels, sports channels, and now you can have unlimited screens viewing at once for that extra $15. So for $60 a month, you basically feel like you have TV. I don't think that $60 a month is really saving you that much money. So I guess my advice here is to just go with that basic like Hulu streaming library service for $8 or if you don't want the ads, go with the $12 per month. Now, if you bundle Netflix and Hulu, you're only at $24 a month and you have access to a myriad of shows. Hulu, again, you're gonna have access to the shows that are coming on TV, which is what makes it different from Netflix, whereas Netflix just has popular TV shows and movies that may be over, or they might be the old seasons of those TV shows, whereas Hulu can give you the more current stuff. And the reason I'm sharing with you all this like crazy priced services on Hulu is because I really didn't know about it until I went to actually do the research for this video. So I thought that it would be interesting for you to know that. Maybe your cable provider charges you, you know, umpteen fees and it actually ends up being over $60. Then maybe this could be a really good thing for you and it could be a good transition into getting away from cable since it's pretty much the same thing if you would be saving some money. So just a heads up for you there. So before I go into some more streaming devices, I wanted to go ahead and hit on my antenna. So I have a Mohu Leaf antenna that I bought on Amazon. And what this is, and I'll insert a picture for you here, it's just this really paper thin flat antenna that's black on one side, white on another. And the idea behind this is that you put this on a wall or on a TV like stand or surface, it can lay down flat. And it's actually receiving the signal from those towers. How old antennas used to work and stick on your house and like beep boop, beep boop. I live in an apartment, so this is a little bit tricky. And for me, this is working just fine. Um, but it truly does depend on the position of your house or your apartment. I feel like if you had a real house, it wouldn't be too much of a risk. But just to give you a few of the specs, this antenna actually comes in three different prices and three different mile ranges. And obviously the farther the mile range, the higher the price. So they offer one that's a 50 mile range for $69.95, another one that's a 30 mile range for $39.99, and then another one that's a 25 mile range for $20. And the 25 mile range is actually a lot thinner and skinnier than the Mohu Leaf that I have. I have the 30 mile range and it's a larger square and it's the exact same size as the Mohu Leaf that's a 50 mile range. But how you determine which one you need is you just go to a site. Uh, my best advice is to Google because each state or city might have a very specific um, website that they use for theirs. So I know that in Dallas they have a very specific site that's called nocable.org <laughs> and so you go in and you type in your zip code and it shows you the towers and where they're located and how close they are 
from your place of residence. Then you position it in such a place where you get all the channels that you need. So this is a little bit crazy and we have ours tacked up on the wall and it looks nuts at first. We've gotten used to it, but we actually had a friend walk in. Maybe it was Brian, I don't remember, but he was like, it looks like a stingray is flying out of your house. And it actually sort of does. We have it positioned and you actually get HD picture we're able to get ABC, NBC, Fox, and CBS, no problem. And that works perfectly for us because we really only watch network television on ABC and NBC. So we're really getting everything that we need. And if we're not home, again, we have Hulu and we have Netflix. So it's not really an issue. We're never really missing out on anything. And if sports are playing, we're going over to somebody else's house or meeting at a bar or something. But I think that you should definitely try out this antenna just for a pretty low price point. So you might be thinking, Maggie, now you're paying $24 for Hulu and Netflix combined. And you're going to tack on this $40 to $70 price tag. Well, just know that the antenna doesn't cost you anything once you buy it. It's one flat fee of $40, $70, or $20, depending on the mile range that you get, and then you never pay for it again. Unlike a cable box where you continue to pay for, to rent that cable box per month or the monthly cable fee itself. Keep this in mind as an option. There are a million different antennas that are actually sold online. I got my Mohu Leaf on Amazon, but I know that Amazon Basics actually sells its own. This is just the one that I decided to go with, mostly because of the super flat design. So another way that I was able to combat buying cable is I have an Amazon Fire Stick. And what this is, is a, it's like a little black plastic USB port that plugs into my TV. This allows you to watch your Amazon Prime instant video from it. It also allows you to download up to 10, it had, well, you can also download from one of their like 10,000 apps and games that they offer. And so we have downloaded YouTube, ABC, NBC, ESPN Sports, and so if you know somebody with an ESPN login, you can log in on the app and we can actually watch certain games at our house if this is where we decide to meet, so it's no problem at all. Also with ABC and NBC, when you hear that they have these apps, just be aware that you don't have full privilege to all of the shows that come on these apps. You actually only have access to like the first two or three, similar to how the old Hulu worked. You actually have to have a cable service subscription in order to get access to that whole library. The fact that it's it's all like interface into your TV in one way, it's just like turning your normal TV into a smart TV. So that's where we access our Netflix, our Hulu, everything all from one spot. It also comes with a little black remote and now I think that they're all updated, all the remotes are, to where they all have like the Alexa voice activation so you can actually search with your voice if you wanted to find a specific movie or television show. And I think that was the big thing that really set it apart from the Chromecast for me because I actually had a Chromecast first. The Amazon Fire Stick cost $39.99 you can get it on Amazon. If you have Prime Shipping, you can get it within two days. Again, that's one flat fee, so you'll never pay for that again. It automatically updates the hardware itself, so you don't have to worry about it going obsolete. And the interface is really cool looking. To me, it's really similar to Apple TV. Again, I don't have Apple TV, but it's just the same. Like Everything is all bundled together, and it's all on your TV, and you control it just as if you have a smart TV. So on the other side is the Chromecast. For $35 one-time fee, you can get the Chromecast, which differs in the sense that everything is done on your phone and you basically project it to your TV screen. So this was something that I didn't really like as much because I wanted my streaming device to be as much like a smart TV as humanly possible. And I think that this was the annoying thing because I was always like running down my battery streaming Netflix to my TV. But on the flip side, it is really nice because if your friend is watching something on their phone and you're like, wait, 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 I want to see, you can immediately just cast it to the TV and it pops up. So depending on your setting, the Chromecast could actually be better. You can play games on it that are on your phone and stream it to your TV and play the game on your TV, which I think is really cool. Yeah, so in order to play your Netflix and your Hulu and everything, you have to have those apps on your phone. So they advertise your phone as the remote for Chromecast. And it tells you that you can actually talk and text without interrupting what's on the screen. So that's nice so that you can multitask. 
it'll just be running in the background at streaming to your TV. So I hope this quick overview was helpful. I just wanted to give you a breakdown of the numbers. So if you were to bundle the Amazon Fire Stick, the Hulu and Netflix and the Mohu Leap, which is basically what I have now, you end up paying upfront $80 and then monthly you'll end up paying $24 if you get the premium plan of Netflix and the basic plan of Hulu. So $24 a month is cut way in half from at least the cable TV services that are around me. So again, if you're a young adult like me and you're looking to save a little money and pinch your pennies here and there so that you can actually splurge on other things later, then I think that this is really something to look into. So if you found this video helpful, please subscribe. I make videos like this all the time reviewing different brands and products that young adults use in their everyday lifestyle. And I'd love to have you in this little community. So like this video if you liked it and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.